يا هلا فويس الصوت العربي في امريكا Hello and salam alaykum peace be upon you this is Karen Danielson and Omar Tawil with Conscious Creed I'm one of your hosts Again, for those of you who have never tuned in, my name is Omar Tawil. I've recently graduated from DePaul University in a degree with Islamic World Studies, and I'm currently working as a youth director at a mosque on the south so in the southern suburbs. And I'm your other host, Karen Danielson. I am the Mass Chicago Outreach and Pace Director. Pace is Public Affairs and Civic Engagement. I also have a master's degree in Islamic Studies from the University of Jordan. Conscious Creed is a radio talk show that tries to seek a balanced view from various perspectives, whether they be generational or cultural, religious or political, spiritual or social, in order to reveal an ethical imperative. Yes, it is real conversation towards a conscious creed. So Conscious Creed is a live call-in talk show brought to you and reaching the world every week by streaming live at www.yahalavoice.com. It airs Monday from 4 to 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time in Chicago. We encourage your questions and comments, and you can call us at 708-321-1313 at extension 1. But you could also visit, visit us at Yahala Voice Facebook page and drop us a line for those of you who may be too shy to speak on the air. But please be sure to start your comments off with the title Conscious Creed. We are open to the Yahala Vo- uh, Yahala Voice Facebook page right now and throughout the entire of our show, the entirety of our show. So please post something so we can address your concerns immediately. We'd love to hear from you so that we can get to know who our listeners are as well. Once again, this is our show, Conscious Creed, reaching you from the world by streaming live at www.yahalavoice.com. And today's topic is Islamic art appreciation. And our guest is Yeah, yeah, how well we have a guest today. I forgot about that already. Right, he'll be coming to us in our third segment. Um, Inshallah. So to get this topic going, uh art appreciation in Islamic history, uh tradition and modernity. Um we'd like to sort of uh suppose a, f- a few questions and issues um in three to four parts and um we hope you enjoy the the breaks in between our segments where we'll be um of course featuring what we consider some of the uh m- movers and shakers in in the tr- in the contemporary art world uh particularly with regard to spoken word uh and singing so our first segment which will begin right now for arts uh and appreciation is the wealth of islamic art omar what what is What is meant by a wealth of Islamic art and what are we talking about? How well, does how do how does Islam and art fit together? You can't just speak about art. You have to also mention mention the culture and when you have the spread of Islam from the Middle East and outward, what you really had first before there was any uh, military action was actually a, a spread of culture. You had an Islamic culture that began to evolve, especially and it really evolved from the Fertile Crescent from the Middle East in places like Baghdad and Damascus. and even Kufa and Basra and you actually have sort of a wealth of scientific exploration and cultural you know uh change that it actually just you know kind of a uh, it just spread all the way to North Africa and even to the east in India and Pakistan and Persia and it's again let's it, give our, our listeners a little bit of time frame what are we uh, talking we're about we're talking here? about we're talking about 8th and 9th century Okay. We're talking about the 8th and 9th century after after you know, after the Muslims had spread to the Middle East and a little bit of Persia you pretty much just have a cultural domination. I mean not only do you have just their culture dominating others because of the output that was happening whether it was arts or sciences or even language or even religious even mercantile it was just completely dominating the entire sector. I also think that um any archaeologist or a uh, person who studies the civilizations has always marked off the art of a civilization it sort of denotes what that civilization is about I don't think they uh, do they really mark it off I'm pretty sure that's what they highlight But that's what I mean they they mark it as one of oh, the most important oh, I thought, I thought principles to look off, at like they toss it in the garbage No 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 oh, okay, What I'm trying okay. to say is that it's it's the remarkable point of an examination of a civilization All right but back back to what I was trying to say like 
again, you, you really have this huge output, immense output that's happening on all levels. And you pretty much, now at the same time, while they're doing this huge output, they're also absorbing rich cultures. I mean, I don't think it would have been possible for Islam, Islamic culture and art to really have spread anywhere if it wasn't for places like Damascus or Jerusalem or even uh, Persia. And then the foundation of Baghdad and how it really spread through its research with Dar al-Hikmah, which was uh, an institution that was built very early on in the Islamic empire that began to spread you know, scientific research. I mean, you have great minds that really came out of that from, you know, from al-Khawarizmi who you know, formulated algebra and, you know, um, and then you have Ibn al-Hisham who pretty much was one of the greatest physicists of all time. He's the one who found out how the eye works. And this is only scientific. So and within a few years of the Islam uh, beginning to spread from the not Arabian... Not a few years. Well, a few years to the first couple of centuries yeah. the, from Islamic uh, Arabic Peninsula, like, the Arab Peninsula, uh, to great civilizations and universities began flourishing, the synthesis of Eastern and Western ideas of new thought with old brought about great advances, as you said, in medicine, mathematics, physics, but also astronomy, geography. And here's what we're talking about, architecture, art, literature, and even history. So Poetry. many crucial systems were also developed, math, Arabic, uh, algebra, the Arabic numbers, and so forth. So again, and you really have, uh, from the scientific research, you have a huge advancement in culture. Like for instance, can you imagine the Taj Mahal ever existing in the Islamic world without the advancement of algebra and geometry? Or can you imagine something like Alhambra in Spain, which is like one of the most beautiful palaces you could pro possibly even go to even till today? Right. Can you imagine any of these advancements ever happening without the, first the scientific research? And then you have from that, coming, you know, some of the greatest artists or some of the greatest artistic works that have ever existed. So I've heard a, a scholar, a contemporary scholar, um, say that he believes that the core and kernel of Islam is the search for beauty. So can you imagine any of those things, not only without the sciences, but without the search of beauty? I mean, always trying to replicate what is beautiful. Allah loves the beautiful. He loves the jameel, jamila. Yeah, Allahu jamilun yuhibbul jamal. And that's something that I've, I really think that Muslims try to carry out, but not as much as we used to. I mean, even if you go, I remember uh, one of my friends, he went to a trip in Yemen. And uh, he, was, he was visiting Tarim. And there was a city nearby um, that had a mosque that looked pearl white. It was on the top of a mountain that looked almost impossible to climb. And he says, it's about an hour hike up there. I'm like, who would go to a mosque? That's an hour hike. He's like, when a masjid is that beautiful, it's worth it. And it really did look beautiful. It looked like, a, you know, just a shining beacon at the top of this huge mountain. And I can't remember what city he was actually from. I just know it was somewhere around Tarim, where, um, you know, Dar al-Mustafa is. It's a huge Islamic institution. And it's just things like that that really produce such, I guess you can say, beauty. Where was that? This is in Yemen. In Yemen. In Yemen. I mean, uh, and you can even explore almost throughout the entire Islamic world. Everywhere, every corner of the Islamic globe you go to, you have different forms of beauty that open the doors to scholarship, science, you know, you ha even especially arts and even culture. And you even have certain places that were, you know, taken over by culture. Places like Indonesia and Malaysia where there was no military expedition whatsoever. It was all art. It was all mercantile influence that really... Is created the biggest Islamic uh, country in the world with over 200 million in Indonesia alone. So again, I really think the way to really appreciate it is to see its effect on people and civilizations, and even on the hearts of people. I mean, and you can't. You, you. I mean, I think one of the biggest injustices of Muslims today is not really appreciating Al Andalus in Spain. And the architecture, not and just the, the archi gardens, not and even the, the, the not even that, not even that. I'm just talking about. The itself, what it represented, the advancements that they made, and the tolerance that they had. I mean, you had the one place in Europe that early in 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 you know in the, even before the medieval era that accepted all religions and all faiths, that had such huge explorations into art, the arts and the sciences, and even the language, and even in religion itself, Islamic scholarship. I don't think you ever have such a beautiful, you know. Uh, how, how do I want to word this? I'm not even sure. But you really never have such a beautiful culmination of Islamic heritage than in Spain. And I really think that the fact that we don't know enough about it 
or we don't really appreciate it enough or we don't even really look back i for me for me personally it's a, it's 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 a sad thing it's a sad reality i think the the spanish influence of architecture art and um just the the design of even <clears throat> simple things like pots and pans and the the coffee carafes and all of these things that came o- spread out of of muslim spain during the how many hundreds of years the 5 to 8 centuries of muslim influence in spain actually went out around the entire globe and i think you're right about the lack of appreciation but it's also the lack of recognition people don't recognize where where the those arts and the geometric designs and you, you even the development funny? of cal- calligraphy you know what's funny when i spent my summer in paris you could actually see some of the cathedrals that have an islamic art to it hmm. the way it's designed like you step inside and as a muslim walking the medieval the medieval structures yeah the, med- the medieval structures you walk inside and you're like wow the inside looks like a mosque except it's darker hmm. <laughs> and there's a a statue of jesus there that wouldn't exist in a mosque but if you were to take that out and to just put a rug out you'd be like wow i'm in a mosque Well, you and you you really have to see that influence especially I mean you're in France which is right in front of right uh, north of Spain and if you don't see if you don't think that there was a cultural influence even on France in Paris then I really I really think again you're not looking you're not looking at it with an eye that's very appreciative right or you you're not recognizing it because uh, Muslim influence went up into southern France as well from from Spain but um we're going to take a break here and um Right after the break we're going to continue talking about this uh this uh plethora of uh various different kinds of art and expression uh that came out of the Muslim world. Um again, neither Omar or myself are experts, but we we certainly um would like to, you know, share with you some thought about it and I hope we inspire you. Um So we're going to take a short break here and this is going to conclude our first of four segments and don't forget that we have Yahya Hawa coming in our third segment later in the hour. Um this is Karen Danielson and I'm your host with Conscious Creed and this is Omar Tawil. Conscious Creed is a live call and talk show brought to you and reaching you the world reaching the world every week by streaming live at www.yahalavoice.com airing every Monday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. US Central Time in Chicago. We encourage your questions and your comments and you can call us at 708-321-1313 extension 1. We still haven't had a caller yet, but uh we hope we get somebody to call, but if you're too shy to voice your your comment or question on the air, you certainly can visit us at our Facebook page which is Yahala Voice and we'll be right back with more of today's topic, art appreciation in the Muslim world. Yeah, Let me take a moment to show some kindness to the folks that thought blindness was a disease that affected the eyes alone. I promise I won't judge you. I barely know how to love you and like fools we preach rules but we don't even follow our own. Everybody needs comfort. Some people find it in this, some people find it in that, and some people just don't find it at all. But this world is full of signs from the moon to the stars and the sky from the bees and the bugs like a seed in your blood like a fiend or a drug makes you need to look up and question what's up why you deal with this stuff when your spirits are crushed and you trek through the rough but like thunder it struck said be and it was all the signs that were sent they finally make sense you feel the torment so you need to repent when your heart is cemented it's hard as a brick cuz your soul is worth more than the dollars and cents all the money in the world couldn't buy you happiness cuz verily it is in the remembrance of Allah that hearts do find rest And do not get it confused. I'm not a scholar or a preacher. I'm just a regular dude who makes mistakes too, but we are reflections true. So I can't talk about me without talking about you and who knew we would end up in a place so confused where little boys want to be like little girls and little girls just want to be abused where they terrorize the truth, mentally arrest the youth even though there is no law but a laws and mama didn't raise no fool 
And who knew that expecting the world to treat you fairly because you think you're a good person would be a little like expecting a bull not to attack you because you're a vegetarian. You can't begin to learn what you think you already know. In man's own ignorance, we forgot that women once watched us grow. And before that, you were a tiny ball of flesh without any bones. And before that, you were just unknown. And now, look, behold, you have the arrogance to assume that you just made it on your own. But what were you but a chewed piece of clot before you grew? And who knew you would trace your ass? ancestries back to a zoo you must have really come from apes with your monkey point of views even the devil believes in God so what does that make you and it's true Sometimes I feel like Noah preaching to a packed empty room. Nobody want to listen until we start rolling out two by two. I'm a big fan of Abraham, never break up from Jacob. Joseph had the kind of beauty that you couldn't find in makeup. Moses was to Pharaoh what stones are to arrows. And David to Goliath what truth is to silence. Following Solomon, I get down too. Contrary to popular belief, Jesus is my homeboy too. So peace be upon the old crew Came to teach what we never knew Even though few caught the groove They never turned blue Never confused what was true Even if it was a taboo Never came for fame or praise But to praise who they prayed to Who? And who knew That an unlettered man From the middle of the day desert would change the whole world from darkness into heaven. You may have every title, every big shot degree, but you still can't explain Alif Lam Allahu Akbar. And who knew there would be so many views and ways to explain that he's closer to you than your juggle of vain. So if you complain that God must be cruel, can you give a law all that he gives to you? From the breath that you breathe to the trees that you feed, from the eyes that you see to the sea that you eat. If I cut you, you bleed, then you heal magically. We're the illest machines manufactured for means. The concept's extreme, but this world is is a dream it's not what it seems filled with lies and deceit the proof is serene so wake up smell the dean praises be to he his oneness supreme totally unique in no need of sleep not like you or me his greatness complete no partners no mates no fathers no sons no discount three and one just the law as so a gel even the birds sing his name the lord of all the worlds glory be to he yeah hello voice Assalamu alaikum. That was just Brother Buna Muhammad from Canada. He's a very famous poet from uh, in the in North Amer North America. And he's, we're he's of Ethiopian accent, uh, a descent, and uh, he really you know he's got an interesting story. So if anybody was like that po that you know poetry, you should check him out on YouTube or you can go on iTunes and I think you can download his album. Again, his name is Buna Muhammad. He's from Canada. He's a Spoken word artist. Yeah, pretty ill And too. we're back. I'm your host, Karen Danielson, and... Omar Tawil with Conscious Creed, a live call and talk show brought to you by, brought to you in the world reaching uh, every week by streaming live at www.yahalavoice.com, airing Mondays from 4 to 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time in Chicago. And our topic today is appreciation of Islamic art. And this is our second 
segment, and we're going to lead it off with a discussion about perhaps maybe some misperceptions and of its significance, the significance of Islamic art in our uh, history, our heritage, uh, today, what it's like, and tomorrow. So I, I just wanted to say one, one quote about... Um, uh, a, a scholar once said, I believe that the core and kernel of Islam is the search for beauty. It is the search for God's inexhaustible beauty and the beauty of God's creation. This search is for beauty is evidence in the power of our shared humanity. Beauty is a universal concept, a unifying force, a source of hope for a better future. Who said that? That was said by... Professor Khaled Abu Al Fadl. Oh, Khaled from Abu the Fadl. I think he's at University of California. Berkeley, I think. I think Berkeley, something like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But, it is uh, cool. So yeah, we wanted to talk about in this segment about you know Islamic calligraphy, geometry, and art, and ar- the architecture of the Islamic world, and again the search for beauty and tying it into you know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, um, you know Allah Jamilun Yuhibul Jamal that God is beautiful and He loves beauty. In Alhambra, in the you know the different geometric you know designs and the mosaics of the mosque and the castle itself, you have something that shows up everywhere. Everywhere you turn your face, it's engraved in stone, and it says La Ghaliba Illa Allah. That there's no overcomer, there's no you know victor, there's no winner, there's no I guess you can say um, assumer of the throne than God Himself. And I really think that you know they're tying beauty with magnificence. Mm-hmm. And I think that's exactly what you know. Again, I always go. I'll probably always go back to this. But whenever it comes to art and culture, I'm always going to go back to Muslim Spain, in El Andalus, where you really have this beautiful understanding. And you not only do you have the understanding, but you also see it within you know the remains of that civilization. But there's so much uh, dis- distinctions between different um, parts of the Muslim world and throughout the history of of Islamic architecture or art. From Brunei to Pakistan, through the Middle East, and up through Persia, and, and the European, Turkish, Ottoman designs to African, North African designs. Yeah. I'm thinking of the distinction between a mosque in Brunei and the Mopti Mosque in Mali, for example. Totally distinct and different. I mean, that's another thing. But fascinating. Both because very, very fascinating. A lot, a lot of times, especially like being, you know, for those of you who are, you know, our youthful listeners in America, um, sometimes we have this feeling that, like, Islam might try to, like, destroy our culture, or, or you know, especially as Americans. But uh, Islam is actually meant to enhance it, and you, you see evidence of this everywhere you go. Mm. You see Islam enhancing cultures and putting them on a scale that's so massive that it changed time. It changed history. It really altered every. I mean, you really have an Islamic empire... That in about 150 years, historians said that it was greater, it was as great as or greater than Rome itself. I mean, and you really have to see that it, was, it got that way because of the cultural dominance. Because of the cultural and the artistic expression that people, you know, put forth. And it, most of it, I'm not going to say all, but most of it came from their understanding of Islam and their close relationship with God. I mean, what does it take to get an artist to put this all over a palace saying, La ghariba illa Allah. That there's no victor, that there's no, you know, um, power except in God Himself, and then to put it in something so beautiful, something that's considered—is uh, it still considered Dr- a world wonder today? Yeah. Alhambra. Um, I, d- I know they had some voting on it a couple years ago on what know. were going to be the new wonders of the world. It could be, but I think I'm just, just saying the pyramids are outdated. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> right. No, no, I'm not trying to diss any Egyptians, but no. Um, but I truly believe that a lot of Islamic architecture is not just looking for something aesthetic to look at and that's beautiful, but that mm. it's drawing our attention to the glory of God. Yeah. In the calligraphies that we see in the uh, in the Muslim world, all across the world, the different kinds of script from you know old yeah. ancient Kufi scripts yeah. to the this new calligraphy of design and and try you know i'm always fascinated trying to figure out what does this one say you know you if you've ever seen the uh, islamic uh, calligraphy of the 99 names of allah or a verse of quran or something and trying to figure out which one are we looking at and looking at all the unique ways that the artist incorporates the word and the 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 color and the drawing and the overlays the mm. top the depth the depth 
and the perception, the depth perception. I think, and the well, I think art. one of the best things I've seen in my life, and it, I kind of felt, I don't want to say stupid, but I was just dumbstruck at what I was looking at. There's this uh, Chinese calligrapher. He's a Muslim. His name is Haji Nuruddin. You can search him up on Google and you'll be amazed with what he does. He combines Chinese calligraphy and Arabic call calligraphy and he puts them on scrolls. And one time I was at his booth at, uh, at an Islamic convention. I'm staring at one of these posters that he has and it looks like it's just a bunch of Chinese, you know, Chinese characters. And I'm just looking and I'm looking. And then I realize that it's, Ar the, Ar it's the 99 names of God in Arabic. But he shaped them in such a way that it looks like Chinese scripture. That's cool. And it took me like 10 minutes of staring at it to actually see that. And I was just like, whoa. That's so cool. You know when you're like jaw on hinges from you, seeing something amazing? You know. That happened to me. I, You know I'm a convert. So when I first accepted Islam and, and you get all these different kinds of people preaching to you what's halal and what's haram and <clears throat> things like that. And, and back in the 80s when I became a Muslim, you know, th there wasn't a, a, the marketplace for Islamic art here in the States. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it, it was like, you know, you have to throw everything out, sort of, so to speak, you know, remove faces and figures from the walls because, you know, people are, are just under the assumption that all these kinds of art forms are forbidden. And, and so anyhow, I, I, I sort of cleaned out everything that I had. And then I was so slow and perplexed about what to bring back in in as art to decorate our homes but to make us feel f feel comfortable and and surround ourselves with beauty beauty it, it's sometimes hard and there's that that internal uh, uh, struggle between being simple and free of too many things around you but then also surrounding yourself with beauty so the, the, the misperceptions that come out of that can sometimes be very complex for 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 us out in the West, where the West has such, you know, uh, a, a huge focus on art appreciation and um, the money that is spent on it, it you know, you, a Picasso painting is worth how many millions and so forth. So I think that you know we always are running up against the the disparity between you know the the simple life of Islam and the the expensive life of the art world and and is that you know so it sort of contradicts how how do you I don't I don't think it really contradicts I mean even when it comes to you know again I said how Islam enhances culture and enhances tradition I I, I just wanted to bring up two quick examples before we go to our second break our third uh, break oh yeah. third Ooh, whatever we we're gonna have Yahya Hawa yeah I know but I just want to say something yes, really quick go. are you gonna Fadal. keep interrupting me yeah no uh, oh, okay. all right cool go ahead. so in <laughs> Uh, I wanted to, like, something that really amazes me is, like, because I think in most cultures, whenever you see a mosque or when you see Islam spreading, it has a certain distinction that makes it look Islamic. Like, when you can distinguish, you can tell what's a mosque almost anywhere in the Islamic world. But in China, I did not realize that the buildings that, like, I was watching a documentary and you see them entering what is what you think is a normal Chinese building because of its architecture. It doesn't, it's not distinguished at all. And they go in there and you see them praying. And that's, you know, some of the oldest mo oldest mosques in China that have been there for over a thousand years. You know, we didn't even get a chance to really talk about all the, uh, the mosques, like a Aqsa mosque. Too, yeah, but like, the, what's awesome is, like, you know how you said that sometimes, like, when you became Muslim, you kind of had to, like, clean out of your understanding of what art was. Right. And then... And I, 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 wanna, I just want to emphasize that that doesn't always have to happen. And that, a perfect example of that is with the Chinese Muslims. You have a, almost a complete you know, a uh, combination of Islamic culture and Islamic art that fused perfectly with theirs and it didn't you didn't you don't see a contradiction. You don't right. even see much of a change really. That's why you I, I labeled it misperceptions yeah. and, and yeah. how do we really address those and issues. And then the second point that I wanted to talk about is um actually even like calligraphy. And that was um it, there's a young brother that I met one time from Tunisia. Uh, his artistic name is El Seed, E L S E E D. Amazing. And the dude does some of the dopest graffiti. Check him out. Please. I have ever seen. E -L -S -W -D. He com he'll combine. W -D. He'll combine geometric shapes, and he'll actually put it outside of the graffiti and the calligraphy. He'll also do calligraphy, and then he'll just do some ill background. That's you know, in, and it's all graffiti. It's all with spray paint. Yeah. And he's actually designed. Uh, you know, he's done certain uh, arts on masajid, on mosques. 
Like you, you there's a mosque in Tunisia that he actually ha- did a whole design around the minaret. And you see a mosque, and then you look at the minaret, and then you see this like graffiti paint there, and you're just like, whoa. Yeah, I want to really play cool. there. It looks ill. We're, we're, we're at the end of this segment, so we're ready to, to close out this segment. In our next segment, right after this uh, song from Yahya Hawa that we're going to listen to, um, we're going to actually, Omar, this is probably Omar's debut of uh, speaking and interviewing a guest in Arabic. I, I'll probably sit out a little bit more. I'll have a question that I might ask you to translate. But we're, we're going to bring Yahya Hawa into the studio in a few minutes. So we're going to take a break right now. This is Karen Danielson. I'm your host with Conscious Creed. And this is Omar Tawil. Conscious Creed is a live call in talk show brought to you and reaching the world every week by streaming live at www.yahalavoice.com. Airing Mondays from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time in Chicago. Remember, we encourage your questions and comments. You can call 708-321-1313, extension 1, or you can visit Yahala Voice Facebook page and drop us a line. Just uh, pre-empt your comment or question by Conscious Creed, and uh, we will be back in a few moments. Yahya Hawa. You're listening to Yahala Voice. Yahala Voice. السلام عليكم السلام حبيبي حياتي كلها لله فلا مولى لنا إلا أحب الله جل علاه ومن حبه له أخشى حياتي كلها لله فرح عندما تلقى حياتي كلها لله حياتي كلها لله فقد غشى فوا أسفى على القلب لأن الزي فقد غشى حياتي خافقي لله 
حياتي كلها لله حياتي كلها لله Assalamualaikum and we're back. I'm your host Karen Danielson and, and this is Omar Tawil with Conscience Creed. We're a live call and talk show brought to you and reaching the world every week by streaming live at www.yahalavoice.com airing Mondays from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time in Chicago. And we're heading into our third segment today. And our topic is Islamic art appreciation. We we headed up the hour with a talk about misperceptions and a few other things. And then we listened to Buna Muhammad and his spoken word art. And we heard a song from Yahya Hawa. And we actually have in our studios with us uh, singer-songwriter Murshid and Kari. Yahya <laughs> Hawa. I, I'm trying to use my Arabic Qari. a little bit. Qari. Thank you. <laughs> So Yahya Hawa graduated with a master's degree in education and psychology. He also started his first artistic career at a very young age after meeting Syrian poet Salim Abdul Qadir, who inspired him. He took up singing with his first album. What is it? Jinek? Jinek, yeah. <laughs> Good, Jinek. It's my Arabic. That was Yahya correcting me. Meeting uh, the Lebanese musician Khaled Janan and Jordanian musician <clears throat> Ayman Taysir helped him in developing his skills in oriental music singing. He studied at the Academy of Music and he learned the fundamentals of Western singing with Amir Al-Nasser in the Hefni Institute in Cairo. Okay, His hit break came in 2005 with his very famous song, Hayati Lillah, right? meaning My Life is for God which was broadcasted on many satellite channels and was translated into a number of languages, including Spanish, English, Malay, Turkish, and Kurdish, launching him into the international, internationally and spreading out his name. Success of his songs was also due to his tours of many countries in the Arab world, as well as England, Canada, Spain, Russia, Australia, Turkey, Malaysia, and most recently the U.S., and he's been on tour for the last couple of years. I, I know you've been around um, in Chicago and other cities. Um, so I'd like to welcome to our show Yahya Hawa. Um, welcome. <laughs> Salaam alaikum. Thank you. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shukran, shukran jazeelan ala taqdim al-tayyibah. Inshallah, ya Rabbi, heke yaddarna naqdi ma'akum daqaiq wa lahzat jameela ma' jamhoorna. Al-mustamia ma'ana ala iza'at yahalavoice.com. Hayya, ana mabsoot min al-iza'a. ابتداء يعني مبسوط من الاذاعه انه باي نت عبر الانترنت والتجهيزات الطيبه والترتيبات الجميله وان شاء الله هيك رح نشوفها ب في سما الاذاعات عبر العالم رقم واحد ان شاء الله بالخير يا رب دائما ان شاء الله دائم. We're really pleased to have you join us on our show well, Conscious Creed شرفتونا شرفتونا yeah. um, I, I, I have to tell the audience my Arabic is really bad so I won't be speaking Arabic and I won't be interviewing him so I'm, before Omar starts to ask him a couple of questions um, Omar translate for me please I have a question to you yeah, yeah, I hope you can understand me in English but Omar will try to translate it for you okay. so your voice has become a great Um, hope 
for Syrian, for Syrian revolutionaries, for the Syrian people. Um, how has that changed your life, and how has it changed your faith, your iman? This is يعني صوتك أنت معروف اسمك منشد الثورة صح؟ ما شاء الله. خاص للسوريا. خاصة للسوريين يعني للجيش الحر الله يفرج عليهم إن شاء الله. تسأل يعني صوتك يعني صارت زي الأمل للناس في سوريا فبدها تعرف إذا في إشي تغير في حياتك من هذا يعني من هذا الحقيقة خاصة في إيمانك للإسلام حلو ابتداء أنا قبل ما أبدأ أغني للثورة السورية كنت عم أغني الأغاني العادية اللي هي أغاني تربوية وأغاني للأطفال باي تشيلدرين وأغاني تربوية ومديح للحبيب المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله لكن لما بدأت الثورة السورية وجدت أنه لازم علي أني أنا ما أقصر في المجال الفني وأقف مع ثورتي ومع شعبي ضد هذا الظالم بالصوت اللي الله أعطاني وبدأت فعلا بالغناية الأولى والغنية الثانية والثالثة والرابعة وهون فعلا حصل تغيير يعني أنا شخصيا بطلت أقدر غني غير للثورة يعني خلال سنتين ما عاد أقدر غني غير للثورة لأنه فعلا صارت الثورة بدمي لأنه شيل المشاهد اللي عم نشوفها مشاهد مؤلمة ما بتخلي الواحد فعلا يخرج عن عن الواقع اللي هو عايش فيه غيرت فيه كتير الثورة خلتني فعلا على أمل كبير أنه رح نرتاح من هالظلام في الوطن العربي كلهم بلا استثناء ابتدأنا الحمد لله رب العالمين بتبع تونس ومصر وليبيا واليمن وهلأ المجرم الأكبر في سوريا والحبل القادم إلى غيرهم إن شاء الله من الظالم يعني تقدر تقول أنه أنا شيدك والمدائح تاعتك كانوا أول جمالي يعني حب المصطفى وإشياء يعني تربوي هيك نعم. وهلا صاروا جلالي لانه بدنا ننتقم من هذا ال... يا سلام <تصفيق> يا سلام الله والله اسم الله, الله. اسم الله تعالى نعم. المنتقم من الجمال الى الجلال يا سلام you think you could translate just a, a small clip of what he said in English uh, he, he, he was saying he was saying that um, at first when he began his career in singing you know nasheed and singing madaah it was usually about you know the beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam peace for be upon him and, and you know he was doing things with, like for kids that you know teach them the religion or just you know kind of like it gives islam it was very i guess you can say beautific songs mm-hmm. always about the beauty of life and the beauty of worshiping god and the beauty of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him but then when when the when the revolution first started in egypt and then it spread to syria later on he says he couldn't justify only singing now about you know I guess you can say beautiful things mm-hmm. when it came to the Prophet, peace be upon him. He had to address the oppressor, Bashar al-Assad, and his regime with his voice that God gave him, gave him as a gift. He had to address it. He had to use his influence and he had to use his artistic ability without, without I guess you can say, kind of ruining it, without bringing down his artistic expression at, at all, but instead channeling it into a different direction. And I Just asked, like him, I, I asked yeah. him if, uh, if, it, if it's safe to say that before the before the revolution in syria that his songs were all you know you know about the beauty of islam and just you know the beauty of god and the beauty of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then when the thawra happened in in syria that it switched to i guess you can say the magnificence of god and one of the uh, god's names uh, god's names and attributes is al muntaqim which means the avenger mm-hmm. and that's a name that represents magnificence mm-hmm. of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i guess you can say I don't know if that's a very good one, a good it's way. Like, no, I think it's it's great. I think it recognizes. You had a question you wanted to ask. لكن لدي أنا لدي سؤال واحد بس. أنا صليت وراك في عمان في المسجد في المسجد الكالوتي والله يعني صوتك جميل ما شاء الله. ما شاء الله. ما شاء الله. أنا بعرف أنت أنت هسا يعني لسه بتأم في الصلاة ولا في المساجد؟ في التراويح نعم. في الصلاة التراويح يعني مخصوص يعني خصوصا في رمضان. فقط في رمضان نعم. سبحان الله إن شاء الله لما أكون في عمان في رمضان أزورك. You met some of our family members. My daughter is married to from Darshanti in Amman and Abd Rahman. Abd Rahim. Abd Rahim Shanti. He also is a Qari. Bin Akhti Mijawza Mijawza Akh Isma Muad al Shanti, who Akhu Isma Abd al Rahim al Shanti, who Qari for Amman. Anyhow, uh, they might not, <coughs> Muad may not appreciate us bringing up his name, but he told me <laughs> that, that, you know, he's a Hafiz and he learned to uh, appreciate and was more encouraged by listening to your, your tapes on, on, uh, on certain surahs. That, that you helped him memorize and that you, you know, Jazakallah Khair, you, you helped him become a Hafiz. So, I mean, in your reading, when I was reading the Quran, it helped me, you know, my daughter. 
في تحفيظ آه آه آيات الحمد لله. آيات وصور يعني بس من صوتك الحمد لله رب العالمين كان يسمع لها وبعد يعني كنت انت آه كنت يعني صوتك كان يعطي المعاني الحمد لله سبحان الله الله يتقبل يا رب الحمد لله فسؤالي كنت امام في مسجد الكالوتي في عمان وبعدين صرت يعني تغني نشيد في ناس انتقدوك في هذا في في هذا الشيء في هالشغله يعني كنت يا امام يا اكيد بعدين بس هي يعني في نقطه الناس ما بتعرفها اني انا قبل ما اكون امام كنت منشد اصلا سبحان الله يعني انا كان البومي الاول جئناك قلوب الناس كن معي ثلاث البومات قبل ما اكون امام اصلا سبحان الله انا بدات بالامامه في سنه 99 لكن مم. البومي كان 96 97 98 ما شاء الله فانا اصلا كنت لكن في الاردن في الاردن فقط في دوله الاردن هنالك اناس تعرفوا علي كامام، اما في باقي دول العالم كانوا يعرفوني كمنشد لا يعرفوني كامام اصلا يعني. نعم نعم ف يعني في ناس انتقدوك في داخل الاردن فقط، اما خارج الاردن اصلا هم لا يعرفوني انني كنت امام مم. يعني يعرفوني انني كنت منشد يعني. That's what I just, that I just asked my question. If people had ever criticized him because right. he was an imam um, in Jordan and do like you know, you know how there's that contradiction that يعني الفن It's that mis- Perception, yeah, misperception that we have and in our I'm cultures. not even I'm not even discussing if music is or halal or haram. I'll leave that to the scholars and to the ulama to debate that. But I'm talking about ilfan, the artistic expression. No, طبعا أنا أنا مع احترامي للانتقد أنا ما لست معه في انتقادي بسبب إنه الفن الذي أقدمه أصلا هو فن نظيف. نعم. وهو فن يدعو إليه الإسلام. الإسلام دين جميل. ودين يشجع على الذوق الجمالي وكذا الى اخره فهذا هذا نوع من انواع الجمال الذي يشجعنا ويحثنا عليه اصلا نعم. الدين بشكل عام فهي هي وجهه نظر لهم خاصه بهم انا احترمها لكني انا ضد نعم. هذه الفكره انه والله الامام صاحب الصوت الجميل لا يجوز له ان يغني او يؤدي بعض الاناشيد او الاغاني اذا كانت نظيفه او كذا في في شيخ درسني قواعد الفقهيه والحديث اسمه الشيخ كفاح هون في آه في بيجي ما شاء الله ما شاء الله آه هو هو منشد كان كان منشد وامام لكن سالته ليش سالته ليش يعني بطل ينشد في في العرايس حكى عشان الناس يعني دائما ينتق كان ينتقدوه صحيح. لانه كان امام في مسجد كبير مم. في شيكاغو yeah. وايضا بينشد اند هي واز برذر يحيى حوج سيد ذات هي ريسبكتس ذا اوبينيون that you know other you know people may have that music you know is whatever whatever opinion that they have about it he's like but i'm using it in a beautiful way that brings someone close to the taste of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to taste the not the knowing of god and you know knowing the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that it's used mainly for da'wah it's used mainly to spread islam and you know again the beauty of it mm-hmm. so he respectfully he respectfully you know he respects the other opinion but you know to each his own and of course The scholars amongst themselves, the Muslim scholars amongst themselves, have their own differences of opinion. You know, it's a it's an area مودوع mm. اختلافي. So, yeah. in sha Allah, you know, whatever your opinion yeah. is or whatever. لا نستطيع أن نتأخذ فيه. نعم. اختلف الفقهاء. سكرت الموضوع. نعم. I've always appreciated the fact that if if there's a person who has some kind of talent to inspire people. people towards good mm-hmm. towards uh you know and and really it's not it's not just it's more than inspiration you 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 make people stand up subhanallah yeah you know and 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 really feel to do something for the sake of allah subhanallah uh, you talk about the music and the music in music not just for you to spread your personality to the people the music is about bringing you to people to people وبتعطيهم امل وايمان ويعني بيوقف يعني بتخليهم يوقفوا ويقوموا عشان يعني يغيروا كم. حياتهم يعني هي كم. الموسيقى اللي عم استخدمها عم استخدمها لتخدم الكلمه والفكره اللي عم اقدمها نعم. ما عم اقدم موسيقى للموسيقى فقط وال اقدمها أيضا. لتخدم الكلمه والفكره اللي حابها توصل للناس ايضا حكت انه يعني يعني بتحبك لانك انت يعني بتكون عندك شجاعه تعمل اللي بدك اياه <تصفيق> شكرا انت شايف انه الموسيقى والفن تاعتك حتوصل الناس في يعني موضوع خير ويعني حتكون دعوه للناس تربوي ويعني الذوق لذوق الله وجماله فيعني هذا شخصيتك فان شاء الله خير ان شاء الله يا رب الله يبارك فيك الله يبارك الله يبارك فيك الله يبارك 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 الله You know, instead of breaking for a song with Yahya, we just have him sing right here uh, instead of putting out one of his tapes. بدل ما نروح لبريك 
يعني ونسمع كمان من الاغاني تاعتك نسمع لك هلا لايف نعم ان شاء الله اغاني للثوره ولا بعيدا عن الثوره؟ اه اي لا. انت اختار ريفوليوشن او سبرايز اس ون اوف ايتش سمثينغ اوف ايتش سبرايز اس ا ليتل بيت اوف ايتش اغنيه كن جميلا وابتسم للكون تلقاه جميلا هي بعيده عن الثوره لكن اغنيه بحبها كثير كن جميلا وابتسم للكون تلقاه جميلا كن شراعا في سفين الحب كن قلبا ظليلا كن سراجا كن قمر كن كما الله أمر كن ربيع الأمنيات كن عبيرا كن سلاما عش محبا للحياة واملأ الكون ابتسامة أطلق الروح لتسمو واروي فيك الخير ينمو كن دليلا أنت نجم فاترك الحسن أثر كن دليلا أنت نجم فاترك الحسن أثر كن سراجا كن قمر كن كما الله أمر غني لحنا للجمال ردد الحب نشيدا والتمس من ذي الجلال قوة النفس سعيدا حرر الحلم تراه يبعث الزهر شذا يمنح الله رضاه كل قلب قد شكر كن سراجا كن قمر كن كما الله أمر Subhanallah, mashallah. I have to say my favorite line is uh, Kun sirajan, kun qamar, kun kamallahu amar. Subhanallah, it means be a lantern of illumination. Be like the moon. Be as God has commanded you to be. Or be, or be as God has willed you to be or ordained you to be. Do you, do you write all your own songs? No, no, I don't write it. This is a writer from Egypt. A writer, Salah Jalal, who was born before three months ago. Rahimahullah. Rahimahullah. No. It was written by a, an artist. What's his name? Salah Jalal. Salah Jalal from Egypt. He was an Egyptian poet that he wrote this song and uh, Brother Yahya sang it. Oh. What oh. century did he write it? Oh, he, 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 and he, just said, he also said that the, the man recently died three oh. months ago. So it's a very I modern know. May, uh, may God have mercy on his soul. Mm-hmm. So, inshallah, uh, and now I want to ask you to sing. I'm going to sing to the Syrian. Inshallah. I'm going to sing to the Syrian. 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 وبدهم مني اكتم المي رح احكي واحكي واحكي يا سوريا لا تبكي رح احكي واحكي واحكي يا سوريا لا تبكي ياسمين الشام مزهر يعني الحرية ملكي ياسمين الشام مزهر يعني الحرية ملكي بي استشهد امنا بعدتو امي عنا تقسر خي ليش ليش شو اللي صار بموطننا كسروا المي حبسوا نغمي وبدهم مني اكتم المي رح احكي واحكي واحكي يا سوريا لا تبكي ياسمين الشام مزهر يعني الحرية ملكي ياسمين الشام مزهر يعني الحرية ملكي ما شاء الله جزاك الله خيرا It's really great to have you as our guest our first guest on Conscious Creed um, I, I hope we've um, made people happy today to, to have you انت اول واحد جيت تزورنا في هالبرنامج يا سلام Can you translate Conscious Creed uh, يعني Conscious Creed يعني عقيدة um, عقيدة تقوى <laughs> <تصفيق> مش يعني من خوف الله من يعني لا. من كونشسنس يعني يكون يعني انا بتشرف انا جاي سبحان الله ترانزيت <تصفيق> يعني انا جاي من نيويورك لشيكاغو ترانزيت مسافر بعد ساعتين كنت في زياره بلغوني الشباب قلت لا لازم نكون متواجدين مع معك في البرنامج سمعت عن الاذاعه 
شيء طيب حقيقه بتمنى آه. لكم كل خير كل توفيق وشرف لي اني اكون اول ضيف معكم خير. في هذا البرنامج اللي انا متاكد انه ان شاء الله راح يكون من البرامج المهمه والمفيده ان شاء الله مو في امريكا لحالها عبر العالم لانه انتم عبر النت نعم. ما تخاطبوا العالم نعم Uh, we were living in Jordan for five years, and I don't think we ever listened to Hayat FM without hearing yes, your, <laughs> your songs, yeah, yeah. your songs, and 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 uh, recognizing the inspiration that it had to many people um, in both worlds: those who recite Quran and those who are inspired by the beauty of of Ghani, of singing. Sorry, my Arabic is not good enough to speak with you straight through, but um, we couldn't pass <laughs> up the chance. No problem. No problem. No problem. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that you know it, it's a great pleasure to have had you here. We we were blessed truly to to have today's topic, which we planned for on art appreciation, the spoken word, singing, and other forms of art throughout the Muslim world and history. And then you walk through the mass Muslim American Society Chicago chapter offices. It was like this this is this is destiny. You know, this is our fate. It's very good that you know you came in and, and you made our show. We thank you. We thank you much. We thank you much. <laughs> in, uh, in the office when we were here. Yeah, in the Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So yeah. it's a, it's a definite, if it's a definite coincidence, and I think if we could take anything anything from this, again, from this entire program that we've had here today about art, about the fen, about culture, about the thaqafah that Islam actually spread throughout the world. And I really think one of the, and, I, and I didn't touch upon this before we uh, listened to a poem by Brother Buna Muhammad, and then we listened to the songs of uh, Brother I- uh, the Imam Yahya Hawa. I think it was very interesting is that You know, I really think sometimes poetry and the language is very underrated when it comes to art, or at least when poetry specifically. And I really think, you know, growing up in America, I always hated listening to Edgar Allan Poe, Emily Dickinson, Shakespeare. I really didn't like it until later in life when I got to college. I really began to really appreciate the artistic expression that was actually found in literature. And I wanted to close off, inshallah, some, uh, with a line by Imam al-Shafi'i, who is a very, you know, prolific Islamic scholar. And it was a very it was a line that he introduced one of his books in Kitab al Um, which means like the mother book, or I guess mm-hmm. you can say like the book of source. Mm-hmm. Everything comes from this book, or when it comes to fiqh. He said, "May Allah, may God bless the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, for every time people send their salah on the Prophet peace be upon him, and may you also bless him for every time those who the the ghafilun, those who forget or the forgetful or the ignorant, every time that they forget him." So it's pretty much coming down to the to another line of Imam al-Busiri, Mawlaya salli wa sallim da'iman abada, da'iman abada, forever and perpetually. At all times may God be sending his blessings upon his beloved, and may he may make us among the muhibbeen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May he make us amongst the ones who love the beloved and inshallah get closer to God. So um, I think we're done with this Yeah, right we are. Now. Thank you everyone for so, joining us today. <laughs> Um, it was truly a pleasure having Yahya Hawa with us and the topic. Um, I think, Omar, maybe we will end up revisiting this topic on another day. Inshallah. But we are at the end of the hour, and I would like to say thank you to our listeners uh, for joining us here at Conscious Creed at, at, on Yahala. It is a live call-in talk show brought to you, and it is reaching you the, reaching the world every week by streaming live at www.yahalavoice.com, and we air Mondays from 4 to 5 p.m., U.S. Central Time in Chicago. We re-air possibly uh, once or twice during the week, so you have to keep up with our Facebook page or our web page to see when that happens. We encourage your questions and comments. You can call us at 708-321-1313, extension 1. Or you can also visit us at Yahala Voice Facebook page and drop us a line. Please uh, preempt your comments with Conscious Creed. Uh, also, Conscious Creed is a radio talk show that seeks a balanced view from various perspectives, whether they be generational or cultural, religious or political, spiritual or social, in order to reveal a certain ethical imperative. It's real conversation toward a Conscious Creed. The thoughts and its opinions expressed in Conscious Creed are those of the hosts, myself, Omar Tawil, and Karen Danielson, and our guests, who was today the Munshid al Thawra, Yahya Hawa. Our production team consists consists of ourselves, and tonight's program was engineered by Brother Hussein Atiyah. Thank you for listening. This is Karen Danielson. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Until next week.
Shahala Voice, connecting the Arab voice globe. Thank you. 